spot opening our event on the main table for the next four days and a player that has put together a lot of great wins and just kind of wondering when he's going to step into a final maybe a semifinal or even win one of these big matchroom events and we can't overstate the interest back in vietnam for nine ball pool no absolutely probably 10 12 years ago maybe even a hair longer further back when we had the world nine ball championships in the philippines we got to see a little bit more of vietnam and to be fair they were way down the ranks years, and they've years come a long ways in what seems like a maybe short decade a hair long further back when we had the world nine ball championships in the philippines we got to see a little bit more of vietnam Now, one change to our normal situation at these matchroom events. For the first four days, there will not be a shot clock. That would be logistically and practically very difficult to implement with so many tables here. But then for the last couple of days, when Sky Sports cover the, the business end of the tournament, the shot clock will be reintroduced. opener there a dong and that's one thing that he seems to be like the best players in the world the very best is a lot of the players in this event once they get you know position very difficult to beat very controlling with the cue ball but some of the players have a little difficulty at times coming with that first shot and I don't see that being the problem here with Wang what I love about this tournament, Jeremy, race to nine, is a, a meaty contest straight from the get-go. Yeah, absolutely, and, and uh, I think that's very well thought of. And You know, no shot clock here to start a rare miss on a, on a difficult shot there, but nothing easy, and you could see the four-inch pockets already kind of showing their teeth. So we'll get to see the potting prowess of Hassan, who's from... The capital city of Bangladesh, Dhaka. But as I said before, based in London these days. University graduate, he's got a degree in marketing. Well, international flavor always here in London and London and one thing that we saw last year is quite a few English making some noise. Maybe not quite like in Fulda with the German contingent of players that we didn't know, but Still the English, you know, or at least the ones that reside here in the UK, really showed showed some some class at times. Not always the big wins, but you know, ran the best players to the hill a lot of times, very close matches last year, so looking at, to improve. Yeah, always good to see the home contingents prospering in their home tournament. We know it will be the case at the Spanish Open coming up. As you say, it's always the case when the Germans play on home soil. US Open at the end of September. We're bound to have significant American interest there towards the end. And I'm, I think I was told that Greece carried some 16 players into this event. That has to be by far the most uh, they've carried into a matchroom event. Kononopoulos here, I believe. Nick Malai, who hasn't played many events in some time, back on the scene. A couple of missed spots so far from Dong Kwok Wang. Kononopoulos here, I believe. Nick Malai, who hasn't played many events in some time, back on the scene. on with, in a good spot now to clear the table in game number one. Wang with a couple misses, but long distance with spin. I think that's the biggest adjustment, I think, to these players for the tournament tables is the slick felt. Getting a little used to the side spin, how the ball deflects. Well, 
our table two, Kachi, winning the opening rack. I think he's a name to watch out for this week. Really good form. Here's the big Albanian taking the first ruck from David Black. JJ Fall from South Africa. Very competent player. Here's he leads Andy Geki from Albania 1-0. see the four inch pockets uh, even early in the event kind of showing us what we're going to see the rest of the week and they're going to get more difficult as the week goes this wasn't missed by much just to the outer jaw with a little speed probably not the stroke you wanted a little more draw on the cue ball so but not much room for here air here at the copper fox arena and you don't want to give Dong, any oxygen. This is the man who prevented Shane Van Boning completing a successful title defence at the World Nine Ball Championship this year over in Kielce, Poland. He beat Van Boning 11-10. And he's taken the opening rack today. So table one is underway and it is the Vietnamese player who's had the, the better start. All about that seven ball being hung. So many big names in action already here. Let me tell you, Carlo Biardo from the Philippines, former US Open champion, like my co-commentator. He leads Sorin Victor Dimofti from Romania, 1-0. Liberto Vivar from Spain, 1-0 up on Dimitri Jungo of Switzerland. Abdullah Al Yusuf, he's 1-0 up on a Brit, Neil Margosian. Jonas Kornmesser from Austria, 1-0 up on the aforementioned Nick Malai. Bada Alawadi, 1-0 up on Harry Harrison. First rack has gone to Michael Dodd of the USA over Hong Kong's Lo Ho Sun. That's interesting. We'll keep you right up to date with all of the scores in between racks as the day goes on. Pretty nice break off there. He's going to get the one down as well in perfect position on the blue two. So this is where the man from Vietnam rarely loses control. Once he gets in control of the table, he just seems to keep it very steady, very smart player, and really has all the shots. Not much here, just a little stop shot on the blue two. That'll offer a little angle on the red three to pull the cue ball up the rail. A little work from the pink four to the purple five. But I'll tell you, of course, none of these players look past their opponent, but we're going to see some heavy favorites here in the first round. They can do themselves a lot of fair favors by playing a real solid match to start. It's going to help them in the second round where things start to heat up. When Fedor Gorscht was forced to pull out of the recent Whirlpool Masters, we thought his replacement would be Duong. Unfortunately, though, he had visa issues. He did have a visa, but it didn't begin in time to play in the Masters. But as you can see, he's fine now to be involved here. Well, what a Whirlpool Masters it was. Really an incredible field and a great event, even with all the big names going down early. With DeWong making the decision, do I want to move the cue ball much? I think he just kind of stays there somewhat to take a little bit of a shot on the nine. Oh, he had a pretty easy angle there on the eight. Don't say he's fluted. No, he hasn't. That was an unbelievable miss from an international campaigner of note. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Just kind of slapped at it, maybe took it for granted. Definitely not nerves early, I don't think, anyways. This wasn't even close, though. Upper pocket, upper jaw by some piece. Well, 
Well, I'm sure that Mahedi Hassan believed he was going to be 2-0 down, so being 1-1 in actuality is a massive bonus. You don't see many nine balls like that missed, particularly by someone of Duang's prowess and experience. That really was very surprising, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, all these events, we see some players that I don't think there's a player in, a, in, in the event that should have missed that ball, but we see some players that are new to the events. You know, there's such a huge situation for them. Maybe the nerves can get a little so high, anything can be missed. But not really from Duong. I mean, that's not that's a very uh, peculiar shot there from him. And probably knowing his mentality, pretty easy to leave behind, especially being a big favorite here in round one. Hassan needs to put in a big break here and punish. Now he hit those fairly head on and he'll learn quickly. That's uh, a big gamble trying to make a ball on the break. Most of the players cutting the one and maybe that's what his intention was, but a pretty full hit on the yellow one. In really natural position for DeWong to easily leave that nine behind. Well, he could check this with a hair right, coming right down between the 6-9 with the cue ball. He decided to take the natural path between the 8-9. Speed's always easiest in that manner. We know there's going to be an awful lot of people watching this in Vietnam. As I've said before, pool over there is very popular and getting more popular all the time. I can just imagine the collective gasps when that nine ball failed to find the target in rack two. Yeah, DeWong, really, if you don't pay much attention, he just kind of puts you to sleep as an opponent. Really casual around the table, not much you know, as far as emotion. But very solid with the cue stick and can do a lot of damage. Yes, and watch out for Vietnam in the forthcoming World Cup of Pool. Duong is partnering Win and Tuan in that, and they might be dark horses. Well, this guy would be a great partner. You think about Moscone Cup and you think about players that are just really good partners almost no matter who they get teamed up with. And I think he, he kind of falls into that category, just super solid, very smart with the cue ball, very easy decisions from one ball to the next. So who was I talking to yesterday? Oh, the Singapore. Singaporean contingent and I'll tell you you gotta love the way Paul is it's hard luck for Han after being a, sim, uh, a runner up last year but he's gonna be replaced by Shark Syed in that up and coming World Cup of Pool with Aloysius Yap so all kinds of great teams there next month in Spain yes we have a double header in Lugo because it's not only the World Cup of Pool but also the Spanish Open. Now then, one nine ball missed. If he misses this one, Duong, well, it would have been a steward's inquiry. But it was always going to go in that one. So it didn't really affect him too badly. The break off from Hassan wasn't fit for purpose. Duong stepped in and regained the lead at 2-1. There you can see a shot on one of the main tables. The table just under our commentary box, in fact. Eklund Kachi going great guns. We fully expected him to win that match, and so far, so good. Carlo Biardo now 2-0 up on Sorin Victor de Mofti. James Jack in an all-British affair against Tom Staveley has taken the first rack. Dimitri Younger back on level terms against Liberto Vivar. 
and Carl Naderberg, an improving player from Estonia, is 2 0 up on Nicholas Ronais of GB. And you said a name there that we don't talk about enough, I guess, you know, but Dimitri Youngo, it seems like, seems to get some results in these big events. Just someone who just doesn't give up. Very hard player, fun player to watch. And the Swiss crew is tough. And talking of hard players, it would be remiss of me not to mention the score of Chang Junlin over on table six from Chinese Taipei. 2 0 up on the Brit Sam Story. Yeah, and Chang's another one of those players that we don't talk about enough, but never a surprise when he's down in the mix. So often he's in that final eight, final 16, and you just kind of say, oh, yeah, he's there. So when's he going to win one? Very nice safety here from Hassan. Surprised he's going with the jump cue. It's a very difficult kick, but a very difficult jump as well. And usually hard to get much speed on this one. Good kick to the top rail underneath the purple five. Wow, what control that was, even though he didn't get the snooker. So we get a pretty good look here at Hassan with an open one balls. I must say, Jeremy, the music's very relaxing, isn't it? If I fall asleep, just give me a nudge. Well, the early rounds, they, they'll heat up here soon. We have some matches that are, you know, on paper a little one-sided, but we figured that in the first round, but there's going to be some close ones as well. There always is. Dave Black, I've seen him play before, and he's a great American player named Dave Black from Wyoming, I believe it is. Not sure how much pool he plays, but Dave... Dave Black of the UK certainly played last year. I remember seeing him play. Interesting he didn't go for that on the one ball. The big story here last year early in this event was all about FSR losing earlier and that early and then he was trailing 6-0 I believe it was in his second round match absolutely right yeah almost came a cropper immediately so while the big names do tend to come through there's the odd exception another early D party last year was Copen Yee yeah, and I believe it was really kind of out of his hands in one of those matches. I believe it was a man from South Africa, if I remember correctly, just ran a bunch of racks, put him in the chair. That can happen in the winter break format. Got a double kiss on the one. Definitely a pocketable yellow one ball here for Duong, but can he really hold the cue ball, maybe go into the nine? Could he check it with a little right, right spin and come into the pink four? So it looks like he's going to play safe, elevating the cue. No, he's shooting maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it always looked as though the four or six would hold the cue ball if he potted it, and now the rack opens up yeah but on the slick table he really couldn't just apply the side he had to elevate the cue so really a nice shot here in rack number four maybe getting a little more comfortable event like all the 256 player events they'll play down to 64 and then go into the single and nation round yeah I think it's the best of both worlds format wise you got the the double elimination early so people have a chance and then it's cutthroat 
You know, everything seems to make sense. Very well thought of. No complaints from the players. One week you kind of, you know, you come from the B side to make that final 64, and then the next week sometimes you'll you'll go undefeated. So many great players in a fickle game of nine ball. I think the double in elimination early makes perfect sense. Of course, Jeremy, when you won your US Open, it was double elimination all the way through. And if you get onto that one loss side early, to go out of that and recover and to win the whole thing is a gargantuan effort. Yeah, it's only happened, uh, I believe, once. Uh, Mika Eminen won back-to-back -back US Opens and won the first year he went undefeated. The next year he lost his first match. He'll heal to Chris Bartram, if I remember correctly, and was on the next table over when it happened. Mika went on to win, I think, 14 in a row or 15 in a row, something like that, to win the title. Yeah, I think that would be his greatest achievement, and he's had many of them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the U.S. Open, of course, still, and the World Nine Ball, I think, are two biggest titles as individual in our sport. Oh, my, and that's the same shot, something with a little speed. Seems like has been the issue early. In many respects, if the nine ball woke him up, that seven was even more surprising. Yeah, and it's, to me, it was almost the exact same kind of stroke, and and it, it may have been something on his mind. I want to be able to shoot a ball firm here with confidence because you could see an easy eight ball, right? He could have just kind of simply knocked the seven in and played the eight from some distance, but maybe trying to pan some things out here early, but got to be careful. Nine ball can certainly go against you, especially after a couple big mistakes. Another name that's in in action, Federer Gorst, who a lot of people talk about weekly and daily when it comes to pool, but definitely here on the matchroom scene. Well, our son. Well, in the second rack, because Dong Kok Huang missed a straightforward nine. This isn't straightforward, but he could steal in again. Yeah. Jerky stroke there. You could see the nine ball kind of slide. Caused a bit of a kick. Yeah, you could dislocate your shoulder if you keep doing things like that. That was the ultimate snatch. And watch out for the two rail scratch where he's standing. It's pretty close. All right, he added the speed to avoid that. And again, maybe testing himself on a shot with a little speed. It's a cliche in football. A funny old game and the same thing applies to nine ball pool that nine knocked in with great aplomb having missed one two racks earlier that was a hundred times easier now let me give you some latest scores here Eklund Kachi 5-0 up on David Black I'm watching that match from up above and I can tell you Black looks really really nervous Kachi's missing a few balls but he's just about to go 6-0 up actually got a, a nine ball to do that Elliot Sanderson, the shouter, 2-2 with Lawrence Thomason, Tyler Steyer, mainstay of the US Moscone Cup team these days, 2-1 up on Jonathan Hughes, as Catchy misses that nine ball, by the way. David DeSantis, he's 3-1 up on Theodore Bitsakasis from Greece, and Wu Kunlin, 4-0 up on Thomas Jedlecki from Poland. And there's a connection between Wu Kun Lin and Duong Kok Wang because it was Wu who beat Duong in the World Championship quarterfinals this year, 11-4, straight after Duong had ousted Shane Van Boning. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Wu, once he gets going, he would have been an interesting one to me if I was a better. I wonder what the odds on him were. 
as an outright winner. He's had some big results and some big events and put together a lot of steam here in a few matchroom events this year, that being in Poland, of course. And I'll tell you another thing, Kachi just missed the nine, but I don't know. I think it's you and I. We've talked about this before. A lot of players like shooting that nine in with a lot of authority. And I think that's something that's going to change a little bit as these pockets continue uh, to get more snug. I think it's kind of like you're fooling yourself a little bit on certain shots to hit the nine in with so much pace. Because he's such a prolific winner, I feel obliged to give you the score of Fedor Gorst over on table four. Things are going to plan. He leads Anthony Jin from the UK. 4-1. Yeah, nice safety there. And I hope some of the, you know, the, the underdogs, as you could say, the locals here from Great Britain, and not too far away. I hope some of them get a stroke. We, that's always the great story to see them really get comfortable and show what they can, they can do. May not happen here in this match. We'll see. But certainly will happen at some time during the first couple of rounds. Pretty easy hit on the yellow one. Hard to predict everything else past that. I'm just going to like this overall. May leave a real first shot on the one. Gonna watch out for contact on the eight after the rail first shot on the one that could pose some problems for the cue ball. And again, being painfully reminded that these pockets <laughs> give you nothing. Well, you know, the diamond table players always talk about the four and a quarter. Uh, it plays tight, it plays great. Four and an eighth, even tighter. Now we're at four inch. So that could get a little a little mental for some players, Phil. I mean, that's that's what causes a lot of these misses, a little tremor. Especially the ones who aren't used to it, like a son. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because they're not used to it and they don't see that, you know, normally a tight table kind of talked about it first by the players the better players but then they just kind of get on with it start getting used to it easily but yeah some of the players that haven't played some of the bigger events they could be in a little bit of shell shock looking at those corners and of course the sides are tough as well we just saw with the two ball there though if you float them in at the right angle at quite reasonable moderate pace they will fall yeah, and it takes the shallow angle down the rail, but I think that'll change as well. The room for error will become smaller. I think we're looking at some pretty good weather here this, this week in this Stratford area, so I think the humidity will be out of the room. So the table should play nice. Yeah, we're in Stratford, which is a, a district of London, not Stratford-upon-Avon, the birthplace of William Shakespeare. So don't get confused. <laughs> and this tournament is not much ado about nothing. It's the real deal. Yeah, I think all the players, of course, everyone working, they love this event. And such a, only being the second year, but just a really nice area and great venue. And I think the weekend's going to be pretty packed as well, from what I hear. So, should be a great atmosphere. Duong hasn't been flawless. He would be the first to admit that. But he does lead 4 1 because Hassan is making just too many mistakes to live with a player who is a seasoned international campaigner. Now, was he warned there about his break-off? I wouldn't doubt it, just, you know, taking a guess. That's what it appeared anyways. And 
I think he's been warned before. I think he got a warning actually at the World Pool Championships, if I uh, remember correctly. And usually that's all it takes. The referee for this one is one of our very best, Marcel Eckhart from Germany. And when Marcel warns you, it is merited. Yeah, absolutely. Him and Des both very, very good at their jobs. And thanks to all the referees here at the UK Open this week. Yeah, you could tell a big difference there on the speed delivery. Still another dry break, though, so. At the end of this rack, we'll give you some more scores. I'll give you one now, though. The winner of this contest in the next round will play the winner of Chris Cowie or Bharat Ramakrishna. And at the moment, Cowie, who's a Brit, leads 4-1. Trying to use the brown seven, it looked like as something to hide the cue ball. And this is where Duong will kind of fool you, in my opinion. Really can come with the shot, and I hope he does decide to shoot it, elevating the back end of the cue. Really deceiving in this area of the game, in my opinion. center cut feel well the best shot of the match so far for me yeah real natural one rail position here and watch this never touch the side rail I don't think anyways and we'll just come one rail off the blue two this is where you take a little distance and make sure you just hit that gap between the pink four and the green six I don't see the point in using two cushions well, now he's going to go into the pink four. Maybe that makes more sense if you're going to come two cushions. And these players are at the table, so they see it best. I think Fetter Gorst has lost another game over there. And now snookered in game number seven as well. Yeah, you're right. 4-2 for Gorst over Anthony Jin. I think Fetter's got, you know, a point to prove this week. Maybe not winning the event, but just playing better pool in the matchroom events. He hasn't played terribly or anything like that. Just at times a, a mistake we don't expect from such an incredible player. In the race to chalk up the first win of the tournament, maybe in front is Petri Makinen, former World Cup winner from Finland, who's leading 6-0 against Glenn Murphy. Well, it was good to see Petri out playing some more events prior to this. And definitely before pandemic, I thought a player that was coming into his own and, and really uh, starting to so show some world class on the table. These kind of shots, Jeremy, is that far jaw of the middle pocket a little intimidating? Well, you kind of wonder how you ever catch it going by, to be honest with you. But something, you know, about the spin on the ball, little kick. Key to this is don't let up. Don't try to, don't try to, you know, steer it down the rail. The best way is to let the stroke out a little bit. He's done well. But like these, for instance, a lot of players fire these nine balls, and I just don't, doesn't make sense to me. You don't want to baby it, but <laughs> why you know, make the pocket even smaller? Yeah, that one was hit pretty crisply. He missed a seven ball, he missed a nine ball, but Duong Kwa Kwang looking good. He's now more than halfway to victory. He leads by five racks to one. Now, I promised you some other scores, so here we go. Dimitri Ungo in charge against Liberto Vivar from Spain. He lost the first rack, did Ungo, but he's won the next five. Abdullah Al Yusuf, 4-1 up on Neil Margossian. 
Carl Naderberg from Estonia. 6 1 up on Nicholas Ronassi. Slower match, Nick Malai against Jonas Kornmesser. Malai 2 1 up. Bada Alawadi, always one to watch. 5 1 ahead against Harry Harrison from here in the UK. Loho Sum, he was 2 0 down to Michael Dodd of the USA. Now the player from Hong Kong leads 3 2. Chang Junlin is 3 1 up on Sam Story. Marcel Price from Wales, he's 3 0 up on Dimitris Siampanis from Greece. Elliot Sanderson, the shouter, you'll know when he wins, if he wins. He's 4 2 up on Lawrence Thomason. And Tyler Steyer from the grand old state of Wisconsin in the US Midwest. 4 1 up against Jonathan Hughes. He's been constantly short with the one ball, just hitting maybe an inch or two before the side pocket. Going to have to get that fixed in a comfortable position to win round one, but hard to figure your chances of winning the tournament struggling on the break. I think about his fourth dry break so far. opener there from Hassan in a great position here on the blue two now could just hold the cue ball there for the red three in the side looks like he's going to go with a high ball and that's the other difficulty about these tighter tables anything into the middle pockets has to be fully respected yeah absolutely and I'll tell you he's, he's had some tactical things you know battles in this set really haven't got to see him try to run a whole lot of balls and Looks very comfortable here in rack number seven, maybe settling in a little bit, even though trailing. black eight there off the pink four. That's why you saw him hit that with a lot more speed in the draw stroke. Just narrowly going by the black eight. Still in a good position to get back on the board. Well, that last shot is the epitome of what you call keeping it simple. like he's going with a high ball here a couple rails around the nine and just one rail now he's going to have to move the rock a little bit from the seven to the eight and this is where the funny side pockets can get you a little bit when you have to put a little speed and they're not funny they're just tight has lost another rack now. Four to three. Yes, you think correctly, Jeremy. What a monumental upset that would be. Yeah, and you know, Pool is in a great spot and the schedule's so difficult, but I know Better was in an event there in New Orleans and traveled over in a short time before this first match. So be a big one to get down, have tomorrow off, come back Thursday, right? To move on. 
So he's travelled from the Big Easy, but he's finding nothing easy about his first match. Yeah, and I did a podcast yesterday, and that's one of the names I brought up. I mean, fetter has got something to prove in these matchroom events. Of course, he's highly ranked, as he should be, but most figure he should be in the single digits when it comes to those rankings. So, Rack 7 here, still up for grabs. The, the clearance proved beyond Hassan, and I think it was because of his positional shot from the 6. Yeah, couldn't agree more and really simplified the seven. Didn't get much out of the cue ball. Made the difficult position on the eight. He's looking to kick behind this. And this is where, you know, playing the shot, how you would play it against one of your better opponents is so important to me. You know, here you may look at, well, I'm playing someone that's a little lesser. I have a little more options. Of course, getting the win here in the first round is the most important. I just love this outcome. And this is the type of shot where maybe he just left just enough of the black eight to be able to make it in the corner. Always going to lose it, maybe. Well, didn't leave anything too, too easy. Awfully thin into the middle. Yeah, that could have been a whole lot worse. Yeah, now he's looking at taking it on in the corner. Obviously, can't hit a lot of speed. It's an odd shot. You have to hit enough speed to get through the eight a little bit to get to the point with the cue ball and avoid the scratch. But if you overhit it, you kind of bounce off the eight and the scratches there and kind of look a little foolish you might say Dave Black's first game there in table two I believe it was his second because he stepped in when Catchy missed the nine in rack six so David Black seven two down against Eklund Catchy Hassan in danger of falling 6-1 down here. And Dewong getting more comfortable. Beautiful shot on the eight. Yeah, definitely beginning to show his true self. Dwong Kwa Kwang, 6-1 up. He looks very much on course for victory. I have to say, Eklund Kachi, I've been watching a little bit of that over on table two. It's just below us. He's doing enough to win, and he probably will win. But he has been a little sloppy. Made a few mistakes. Sometimes when you get into a situation where, in your mind, you can't see how you can lose, you lose concentration. Absolutely, and it's, it's uh, when it comes between the ears, I don't think there's a, more of a sport in the world that's more important. The nine ball pool and and Kachi, you know, he'd be the first to tell you, you know, I'm a favorite or whatever, and I'll be okay and maybe a little laxed, but okay again has missed the one and really hasn't varied it much, and that's surprising to me. It's one thing, you know, to. to course of practice this and, and ready for this type of break shot but you definitely want to change it up a little bit especially in a situation you can afford to that being here with a 6-1 lead and a, and a huge favorite in this opening match all right probably rolling out to a kick shot here maybe maybe roll onto the pink four or something like that He didn't play the snooker. Didn't make it a little on. But kind of figuring not to get this back.
very interested to see the snooker champion in the next match. Should be fun. Well, that's the story with him. In terms of talent, he is a champion, but he's never won a tournament. He's the player who's regarded, Jack Lazowski, as the finest player yet to win a world ranking event. Now, people say it's only a matter of time, and I personally believe that also, but you can never guarantee that someone is going to make that breakthrough. He should do it. He's been in numerous finals against top-class opponents and lost them, but he's certainly got the ability to win big tournaments. And if you see him at his potting best in our next match, it will be a treat. Yeah, I got to watch him cue it up a, a few times yesterday and uh, look pretty solid. And really was taking the information pretty well, seemed like, from the players that were trying to assist him with some things, the break shot and just little moves here and there. Yeah, Carl Boys has given him some coaching. And Carl will be my co-commentator for match two. Lazowski's a great player to watch snooker-wise. And I'll tell you what with him, what might really boost him is the fact that Luca Brassell won the recent World Snooker Championship because Brassell is a very similar player. At his best, inspirational. And he brought that inspirational snooker to the Crucible. And Jack must think, well, if Luca can be world champion, I can be. Yeah, that was a special final, uh, very highly talked about. And good to see a little cross from the snooker players into the nine ball pool. Yeah, also here from the world of snooker, David Lilly and the reigning Scottish Open champion in snooker, Gary Wilson. Trying to cut the one in, overcut it. Trying to get position on the blue two. He did get there, but that's very difficult for Hassan. Seemed like a nice guy, Jack, as well yesterday with with all the all the all the players. Seemed, seemed like a real refreshing guy. Absolute diamond. He really is. Yeah, this ball may get behind the purple five, making things now it escaped that. He is snookered behind the green six and the red three, but an easy kick shot to hit the yellow one. I can tell you, Erklin Kachi on table two has got ball in hand. He could be the first player to record a victory. Table two, of course, available on the Matchroom Multisport YouTube channel. It's been a walk in the park for him, really. Hasn't been extended in any way, shape, or form. Oh, beauty there. Caught it a little thick to the pocket, so may not get the shape on the blue two, but really a nice shot on the one. And Kachi looking for that breakthrough win in the Matchroom event. Yeah, we're just talking about Jack Lazowski. We know he's got the ability to win big snooker tournaments. I think Kachi's in exactly the same position in terms of our matchroom tournaments. It's in the mind of many people, only a matter of time. We'll see. Yeah, and it may be uh, quite a few events that come with it when he does get that first one down. Well, he has beaten David Black 9-2. Yeah, and them having a few words there. It looks like very good stuff from Kachi, making his opponent feel a little better about things, knowing he's got to play more matches. Will be on the one loss side for Dave, but he'll hang. So that did not work out. The, the jump shot failed. The pink four ball caught immediately. It's ball in hand. Yeah, and I don't understand this. It's at the high level. Trying to three foul your opponent is something that's very rare. Not only trying to do it, but very rare succeeding <laughs> as well. So, And with the balls as they were wide open, that doesn't tell you a lot about his confidence level in terms of potting the balls. Yeah, and it's, it's one thing, you know, at your club room to beat some of the players with the safety side of the game. But the better level in any sport, it's all about aggression. 
and, and taking it on yourself and one guy by Hassan there. Also, Duong Kwa Kwang is so technically and tactically savvy that the three fouls from him would be unlikely. Yeah. And the thing is, not only is it a unique situation when you do have a three foul, but it's because there's a unique setup of the object balls that they're usually very difficult, something you can't run, a lot of clusters. So it makes sense, and it makes the kicking more difficult. But when they're open, very hard to get that ball in hand from the top players. I think that was the, the manifestation of nerves. Not used to being out in centre stage against a, a big name opponent. Certainly not used to being in front of the television cameras, Mahadi Hassan. And you know, nerves manifest themselves in many different ways. Yes, we've seen it already from him. Players can have excessive upper body movement, but also it can affect their clarity of thought. Yeah, I think that's the one that causes the problems with the better players when the nerves get high is losing it between the ears a little bit. That's why the Moscone is so unique as well. The players that can keep it solid between the ears usually seem to be some of the best. Talking of the best, what about Fedor Gorst? He was pegged back to 4-4 by Anthony Gim. It's now 5-4 Gorst. He's just won the ninth rack. As for table one, it is one away traffic. And I definitely have seen Hassan play before. Maybe it was the UK Open last year. Seven one and Hassan's tactic to try and get those three fouls backfired spectacularly. Now on table 22, way out in the sticks. It's also seven one for Chris Cowie over Bharat Ramakrishna. And the significance of that, as I mentioned earlier, if Duong does come through, which now looks overwhelmingly likely, he will play either Kelly or Ramakrishna in his next match. Petri Makinen, 7-2 up on Glenn Murphy. I can tell you Wu Kun Lin has won his match 9-1 against Thomas Jedlecki from Poland. Walter Lekra from Sweden. He's 3 2 up on Belgium's Kevin Lenoy. Tyler Steyer 5 2 up on Jonathan Hughes. Still no one on the side. Did get the 8 and the 1 in the upper right hand corner. Has a little bit of a thin shot on the blue 2, but the 3 near, the red 3. Maybe takes the cut shot on, on the 2 here. Maybe bumps the pink 4 to contain the cue ball. Could apply just a little inside English, avoiding all the balls as well. Looks natural to go into the pink four, but still probably wants to avoid that. Now that was playing with fire. He caught the bump of the middle pocket. It's not caused him any great trouble, but he was nearer scratching than he would have wanted. Yeah, that inside spin the first day or two doesn't grab quite as much, so the players have to kind of make a little bit of a gray area kind of calculation on shots like that. And speed means everything. Logo issues. There's going to come a day where someone's logo falls off and hits a ball and of course it will be a foul shot in fact in his match earlier on against David Black Eklund Kachi dropped his chalk and the chalk missed the seven ball by a millimeter yeah it's amazing we've all done it and it seems to avoid the foul
I don't really think nerves going on here. From Duong, I, I just see maybe trying to settle himself, trying to maybe look forward, you know, some shots here in this match to look forward to in future matches. Break shot would be the one that would be alarming to me at this point, but here we're looking at a break and run. Yeah, you're looking at the negatives from this match, and it would be the missed nine ball in the second rack, the missed seven ball in the fourth, and in general, his break off, which hasn't been effective. But I think he's done enough to show that if he can get the break sorted out, he will tidy up in terms of those unforced errors. And I think he's produced enough shots to, to show us that he could be a factor. Well, not only that, his history has shown us that he'll be a factor. And just like all the great players, they seem to get better as the event goes. A little look to the gods there, wondering what was that with the cue ball. And a bit more of a nine ball shot than we expected. He's got to go to the upper right here. Looks to me he's just the blind pocket to the upper left is just a little more treacherous. Well, you see so many of those shots undercut, don't you? It's amazing. He's been very fortunate where the nine ball has come to rest. Yeah, and just through that rack itself, he, it just seemed like, like the match was very close, like it was a, a bit of a sweater the way he appeared from ball to ball, but now I miss nine ball. The gentleman behind him there wearing a St. Louis Cardinals jersey that's significant because the Cardinals will play the Cubs just down the road here at the Olympic Stadium at the end of June in the London series yeah, and that would be sweet to be able to attend I was actually just in st. Louis a few days before this event I was hoping to maybe get a Cardinal game but they were out of town not going so well are they this year seems like that every year with them though and then Come August and September, they get hot. League looks a little different to me this year, though. More good teams. Besides the A's, of course. And the Royals are pretty ropey. Yeah. My brother texted me and said Are they should be called the double A's is what they should be called. But Yeah, I like drawing this ball if you're going to shoot it down the rail. A lot of people would say the high ball, but I really like the contact of the draw stroke here. Seems to want to overcut this with a high ball a lot of times. We caught that point we were talking about. Now, come on, Mahadi Hassan, knock this in, get another rack on the board. Double your production. Not in doubt, well done indeed. So the nine ball was missed by Duong Kwa Kwang twice in that rack. That's three nine balls he's missed in the match, even though he's in total command still, leading by seven racks to two. Can give you some scores. We've had some whitewashes here on table three, no surprise. Carlo Biardo whitewashing Soren Victor Dimofti of Romania, 9-0, Biardo very much a title contender. South Africa's JJ4 also coming through with a clean sheet against Andy Gecki of Albania. And Carl Naderberg from Estonia beating Nicholas Oranas of GB. 9-3. Bada Alawadi, 9-3 winner over Harry Harrison, also from the, the home country. Chang Junlin, 6-1 up on Sam Storey. Elliot Sanderson getting ready to shout, no doubt. He's 7-2 up on Lawrence Thomason. Tyler Steyer, 6-2 up on Jonathan Hughes. Petri Mackinen has won, 9-2 against Glenn Murphy. Chris Cowie on the hill against Bharat Ramakrishna. And let's take a look further down our bracket to see how 
Fedor Gorsh is faring well. He's pulled two clear again. It's 6-4 against Anthony Ginn. So all kinds of play going on. So many of the world's best involved already. Yeah, and just from a distance, I don't know Anthony again, but sure seems like a player that swings with a lot of confidence from what I can see. Kind of loving the moment, it looks like, as well. Yeah, for the players who aren't used to competing on the international scene, it's all about embracing the moment and trying to play as you would down at the club. Now, that's so much easier said than done, but it is true. Yeah, and, you know... Don't let the situation try and ch change your shot selection and, you know, the way you play normally. And, you know, it just takes a little time. But for some players, it comes a little quicker to get comfortable. And I think your attitude has a huge part to do with it. We see that with the top players, how they have to have those attitude adjustments and through their career and make little changes. Difficult jump shot here. Trying to go over the eight that's some distance away with the one close. Should make it, I do feel, but could lose the cue ball. Oh, he's jumped over the one and the eight. They could stand there all day and not do that again. Yeah. Definitely got it on the way back over the, oh, both ways over the eight and the one. Off the rail into the corner. Tidy little position shot here, and he may have overran it. I think he did. It's close. Hard to tell from his reaction, wasn't it? Yeah, I think he's okay, just barely. But did he get enough out of this? This is. A, these are big mistakes, and. Of course, again, it shouldn't matter in this match overall. You never know with nine ball, of course, though. But for future matches, an unsettling kind of situations for Duong. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that if he wins, we must say improvements required. It's hard to really, you know, been around him quite a bit, Duong, but it's still hard to get a read on him at times. Doesn't show a ton of emotion. A real gentleman has won over on table 20. Abdullah Al Yusuf has beaten Neil Margosian 9 2. Tough pocket. Pretty interesting four rail safety there from Duong. Alex Kazakis warming up on table two. He'll play his first round match here shortly. Yes, the next match on table two, which is available on Matchroom Multi Sport YouTube channel. Kazakis against Mohamed Daydat from South Africa. is going to get another on the board and miss the six ball. Not setting the world alight, is he? You have to say some of these shots have been below the standard we expect from him. Yeah, even there, I don't think he really saw that bank being made. Kind of an odd way to play safe, drawing all the way back to the end rail. Did get in a decent position, but... A whole lot here. I you figure him to bank the pink four, one rail kind of underneath the brown seven and the purple five, and 
Brian Brandon cue ball one rail behind the eight, the black eight that's up on the top of your screen. Yeah, something like that. Really good with the cue ball. Did leak out. Well, maybe not. shot there, Phil. Purple five in the cue ball. Perfectly timed. Get a nasty snooker on the pink four. Most extraordinary example of timing, as you say, I ever saw. A photograph was sent into Snooker Scene magazine, which was very fine, where on a snooker table, two reds arrived at the pocket at exactly the same time and stuck inside the pocket. Wow. Probably never saw that again, huh? It would be one in a million chance, would it? Right. A right. little bit of a difficult hit with the ball out in the middle of the table. Nice getting the contact on the pink four. He's going to surrender a shot, but nothing easy to get onto that purple five. like he's going to play the contact off the black eight to come two cushions maybe towards probably the center of the table taking the cut shot on the purple five and I think it's just timing is off very odd without wishing to be unkind to his opponent if Dwong was playing one of the top players in the world he would be very vulnerable given this performance yeah, I couldn't agree more. And and again, every, everyone looks at these matches a little differently. Of course, we don't know sometimes the travel some of these players have taken on. And it's a little different these days with so much going on in the pool world. Of course, the players trying to consume as much of that as possible. I know when I played and I came to Europe, I was like three days early at least. I, I just felt like I had to do that. Asia more like four or five days early. All right, I hope he stays offensive here. Got to knock some of these balls in to not only win games, but to win matches. I think for the UK overall, you know, they have a lot of great cueists, right? They just need a little more of the experience playing nine ball overall, I think. I think we saw that difference there in Germany last year to where, you know, I wouldn't say there were better cueists in Germany, but just more experience playing the game of nine ball pool, and it really showed. Well, one player who represented GB at the World Cup of Pool Last year, Elliot Sanderson has just won 9-2 against Lawrence Thomason. Elliot let me down. He didn't shout at all. I suppose that a shout would have been inappropriate after a 9-2 win. Well, I'll tell you, he had, a, he had a lot going on this last week at the Scottish Open, being his host room and the house pro. And Elliot, who always is full of energy, I wouldn't doubt is a little fatigued. And probably pretty happy to get through that first match and most likely a day off tomorrow. Another winner just confirmed Chang Junlin. Watch out for him as the week progresses. He's beaten Sam Story. It was a one sided story, 9 1. Yeah, well, there's always been an argument who the best player from Chinese Taipei is, and he's definitely in that argument. 
and you'll be pleased with this as Don Kok Wang reaches 8-2. Also, that's the scoreline for Tyler Steyer against Jonathan Hughes. Steyer on the hill. David DeSantis from Italy, 7-4 up on Theodore Bitsakis from Greece. Terence Gulliver, 6-4 up on Adam Stankovitz. And Chris Kelly, he's on the hill against Bharat Ramakrishna at 8-2. Tyler Starr has had a lot. Oh, he changed it up a little bit with the break shot there. Trying to you know, get a little more information as he will most likely advance through this first match. But I think Tyler Starr is another player looking for better results. You know, he's, he's played such a... Uh, some of the finest matches against the bet that you know when he's an underdog just needs to put the whole thing together he's just won on table five nine two against Hughes I'll tell you Hassan will learn not only to improve your game you have to get a little more aggressive but that's what it takes to win win matches Or should be near that heel. Well, other recently minted winners Abdullah Al Yusuf, Karl Naderberg, Bada Alawadi, and Loho Sami was 2 0 down to Michael Dodd on the next nine racks on a row, or in a row even. Yeah, and that's about miss number five or six, I think, for Duong. Not something you see very often. You know, I think it might be even more than that. He's missed three nine balls. He missed that very easy seven ball. Yeah. He's going to get a little flick on the black eight. It's going to do him no favors for the red three here in a moment. But in position on the blue two. Probably tries to come to some two rails or the combination on the three eight. Not too difficult. I'll tell you, you know, Al Yusuf had some nice runs a year ago in some tournaments and, of course, has had some results. But I still think Batter is a guy that we could see. You know, Batter Alawaldi, I think he's a guy that could get going and make some real noise in one of these events. Cling on to hope. Six down, seven to play. That is Mahadi Hassan. Looks like, is he going for the jump cue? Can he reach this? Is he going to shoot this lefty? A very difficult reach for the right hander. Mm. Okay, he can get at it, it appears. Looks like he's still not aiming at the left of the three. That's what I thought. I, it looked to me, it didn't look like he was aiming at the three, and that that odd stretch really cost him ball in hand. And where the remaining balls are, it might well cost him the rack. Yeah, look at that. The the aim was definitely askew. Yeah, it appeared so, and just knowing where he had to stretch from, I thought it was going to be very awkward. I thought he was going to jump at lefty. We're going to see something a little special, but not the case. Yeah, and he's gotten a little awkward cueing over the eight. Shouldn't be a problem. But now, does he pull this one rail between the five nine? Does he come across two rails between the six nine? I think for some of the players like Hassan, you know, at times it may be not their style, but maybe pick up the pace and, and you know, forget about the brain for a little bit. You're going to play shape. You're not going to sit there and just stop your ball and maybe get the arm loose, get to knocking some balls in and 
maybe enjoy it a bit more. Kazakis now has started his match on table two. You know, he's a Whirlpool Masters champion, but also still looking for a huge victory in the matchroom stage. On the multi-table, you might say. Yeah, I think these tournaments stand out, don't they? So hard to win 256 players in the field. So many matches to negotiate. And that right there is what I'm talking about. Let the arm swing a little bit. That was nicely struck. In my opinion, a lot of times, you know, when the nerves are high, we tend to aim too much, Phil, if that makes any sense at all. Like, really try to get perfect on things instead of understanding. Got to get that arm loose. And it wasn't loose there, was it? You could see the shoulder went into the shot terrifically. That was a horror show, technically. Yeah, you're dead on there, and... The son that definitely knows it. It wasn't hasn't been the best for for Huang at you know at all times, that's for sure. Indeed not, but it is mission accomplished in the end. He missed quite a lot of balls. He missed three nine balls in a very easy seven. He also made other mistakes, but Duong Quoc Huang from Vietnam does progress. He defeats Mahedi Hassan from Bangladesh by nine racks to two. And in the next round, he will play Chris Cowie, who's also beaten Bharat Ramakrishna.